Hey Jack, I'm back, and with me, another speed art. This one is of Leonardo from TMNT 1990. So I uploaded the evolution of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to my channel last weekend, and for it I've watched and rewatched all live action Turtles media way too much. So I wanted to get all my thoughts about all the live action suits and turtles out of my mind. So without any further jibber jabber, let's jump into it. In last place is the Turtles from the Turtle Tunes series, a sort of spin off of the Coming Out of Their Shells tour. This is like a straight to VHS series that featured the Turtles singing mostly public domain songs with often changed lyrics to relate to Ninja Turtles or something like that. Think songs like I've been working on the railroad, altered into I like to skate around the fountain and stuff like that. It's just really bad. On top of this, these suits are super undetailed. Their turtle shells look like they're peeling off of their chest. Their color of green is super unnatural. Their bandanas are way too long and their feet are super tiny. Of course, these turtles had no budget to work with or at least not a movie budget, so they were bound to make some concessions, but most of the choices they made were pretty awful. Coming in ninth place is the Coming Out of Their Shells Tour Turtles. Now, these are really sickly looking turtles with way too many spots. They don't have any shells. They have these plump bandanas, veiny legs, weird leg cozies, and jean jackets and tight sweaters. Now, these turtles are very weird looking. Now the backstage look is a lot nicer, so I know they could have pulled off a better onstage look, and I'm assuming they must have made some concessions to, you know, allow the turtles to move around more easily, but I feel like they made a little few too many concessions because these turtles are really creepy looking. Now the story itself about how these turtles became musicians is also weird and barely works. Instead of like spreading and bringing love through the ninja-ing, they want to start doing it through songs and they think they can reach a bigger audience then. And I think I'm too young to have, uh, you know, grew up with any nostalgia for this tour. Like I was probably only one year old when this was happening and I don't have any nostalgia for these turtles. And to me, they just look like creepy reptiles. <laughs> And in number 8 is the Next Mutation Turtles. Now this TV show suits were actually designed by the Chioda brothers, at least their company, who actually made the Killer Clowns movie, which is actually a pretty cool connection. Do these suits hold up at all to the Killer Clowns suits? No, not at all. I don't know if they just didn't have enough budget or if there was like some producers who were saying they have to have this or have to have that. But either way, I just felt like it doesn't really match up with what came before it and I feel like their personalities are very much lacking here. Now they do have colored padding, white wrappings, sashes across their chest with initials, and they always look sleepy and have longer pupils. I don't know, they kind of just like all blend together more easily. Like their heights are pretty much the same. Their builds are basically the same. It's just like, they seem like they're all the same turtle, except for of course Venus de Milo, who has been basically ousted by the fan base and the creators. Although they do all have different looking bandanas, which I think helps to differentiate them a little bit. I think, feel like they must have had to do that because it looks like they're using the same molds for each of the characters, at least the male characters. And yeah, their personalities do start to blend together a bit with this show. But do they have a memorable villain like Shredder to take on? No, instead they rely on campy Power Ranger-esque villains to fill that void, and it doesn't really work. So overall, I'm just not a huge fan of the next mutation. In 7th is Operation Blue Line, the LA train promotion video. This was a straight to VHS tie-in to promote the new LA light rail system and it uses suits that are made to appear like the Playmates toys. These same suits would make their rounds at conventions in the early 90s. They're obviously a little silly looking and cartoony but for what they are they work well and almost appear like the 1987 animated versions brought to life. Although it's hard to rank them compared to other versions so let's just move on. In number 6 is TMNT 3. Now these turtles have paler skin, darker spots, shinier weaponry, and animatronics that lack the finesse of the first two films, especially with their dead eyes and the lip sync that barely matches what they're saying. They do also wear Japanese armor, which does look better, especially since it covers up a lot of their suits, but these turtles just look plain bad. Like sickly bad. The turtles lack any difference between their faces and the seams of their neck is much more noticeable. Not sure if it's just the lighting or the way they shot it or if these suits are just much more poorly made. I know that Jim Henson was not contracted or his studio was not contracted to work on these suits 
so I think the studio that did work on it just like wasn't nearly as good or didn't have the same budget, I'm not sure. The movie itself, the creators felt was a step in the right direction and a return to the darker themes from the first film, which is sort of true, but these turtles seem even more childish and the way the whole film was lit makes them seem somehow even more kid friendly and creepier all in one. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of TMNT3's portrayal of the turtles. Coming in fifth place is the backstage looks of the turtles from the Coming Out of Their Shells tour. Now this was a straight to VHS kind of pseudo documentary they released to like sort of line up with the tour and the turtle suits they use in it are actually quite a bit better than the actual versions that you see on the tour. They seem less sickly, they have their shells back, and they don't wear any jackets or anything crazy like that, although they do still have their musical outfits a little bit. Now I don't know why these turtles weren't used on the actual tour. It does look like they're pretty bulky looking so I assume they probably couldn't be used to like dance or move around too much on stage with. Although I don't know why they modified their heads and their skin so much. It does look a little thicker but they could have kept that same color and basic shape to make the turtles on tour because these turtles actually look pretty good all things considered. Especially for like a fake documentary that was made to tie in to the tour and was only ever released on VHS. Now are they movie star good? No, not really, but they're pretty good looking for what they are. In fourth place is the turtles from TMNT 2014. These turtles are much more monstrous, they have prey skin, way more clothing, have much more armor, and they have weirdly human faces that lack their beaks. While they're brooding like Batman of the time, they're also a little campy like Batman of the 60s, which is a strange juxtaposition I suppose. They're also basically bulletproof and can not only survive giant falls and extreme danger, but it seems to be hardly a problem for them. Unlike the first film where it seems like they could get taken down, these turtles seem basically invincible which results in them hardly ever doing ninja stuff and instead just punching and running their way through issues. Although it's not all bad, as I do feel like the mocap actors did a great job and the CGI actually looks pretty great and looks even better than the budget would imply. I also like how the turtles are much easier to tell apart by their height and their builds, which is something that would carry over into some of the animated versions later on, so overall it's a mixed bag but I can't deny the artistry on display. And rounding out the top 3 is Out of Their Shadows, the sequel to the 2014 film. It's just a little higher up in my ranking than their portrayal in the original film, and it mostly just brightens up their designs, softens their skin a little bit, and streamlines some of their look to make them a little less cluttered. <gasps> Although it's kind of like how do you dress up pig? Yeah, these designs are better, but they're still very close to the first movie designs, which were pretty poorly received by most of the fans for the most part. But these fixes do make them a little easier on the eyes, and the effects and mocaps are still quite well done. That's why this one's coming into the top three, and it's just edging out the original film by just a little bit. And coming in second is the slightly brighter, more spotted TMNT2 suits. Their eyes are a little bit bigger, and their heads are rounder with less dis distinct head shapes than the original, and their bandanas are now a brighter color too. You basically have to think of these turtles as live action versions of the 1987 cartoon series while you think of the first film as more of an adaption of the comics because of this change in tone. With that, the turtles are much more juvenile in this film with some of the voice actors being swapped out as well. But for the most part, this change works pretty well, although it does create a more disposable film. Although it's still good to toss on every few years and just to hit that nostalgia button. You know, you don't have to pay as much attention to it, so you just have it on in the background. And of course, the Jim Henson company still did the suit designs for this film, and you really can't go wrong with that because that's just like, how do you beat the Jim Henson company making a turtle suit? You really can't. So that's why this one is coming in at number two. But in first place is the original Turtles from their live action debut in 1990. Perfectly molded with details that aren't too spied up but have perfect covering that make them feel real. Their faces are more distinct looking and their animatronic components are amazingly lifelike with their best lip syncing and facial work on screen. The film itself is darkly lit with some darker themes conveyed throughout and each of the Turtles feels like their own character. Plus this movie is the first film to make realistic turtle suits on such a scale and on such a low budget. Obviously made in the wake of 1989's Batman when movies were allowed to be darker even if kids might be the target audience. It's the perfect marriage between the comic versions of the characters and the cartoon TV series. So really can you go wrong and could there be any other answer? Of course the 1990 turtles are number one, both for their portrayal on screen and for the way that the suits look. But what do you think about the TMNT 
live action suits and which ones are your favorites let me know down below i'm very interested to see your ranking or just let me know your favorite or least favorite that's always fun to see too so do you think they should continue making more live action tmt movies or tv shows personally i'd love to see it but you know whatever happens happens i'm happy to see the turtles in animated form and i'd also like to thank my patrons at the end of the video here including the recently signed up joshua lucio lucio uh, if you want to hear me mispronounce your name check out the patreon down below there's links to check out the latest animation as well until it animated which would be this video probably right now if you're watching this early and until next time i've been aaron and i'll tell you something later